Hi, I'm Diane DeCamera, and I am with the Anita Salas Memorial Fund. And first off, we just really want to thank Loveless Women's for all the years of support, along with Girls' Night Out, in all their support for our charity, for our women around New Mexico, and all they've done for the community. I also just want to tell you that the Anita Salas Fund helps women with breast or cervical cancer or men with breast cancer. We help pay for premiums, for insurance, for co-pays, for co-insurance, for down payments on hospitalizations. We also help uninsured women pay for um, a lump sum, negotiated fees to get them into medical care and medical treatment so that access to treatment, that barrier is broke down. We also pay for related medical items like transportation, lodging, lymphedema sleeves, prescription medications, and, and other things that are related to the cancer. And this year, excitingly, is our 25th anniversary of this grassroots fund that started in 1996. And so we're celebrating. And if you need help, you can call us. And if you can donate, we would so appreciate it. So for questions or to donate, call us at 505-841-5896 or visit the website at the link below. Hello, I'm Christina Silvis. I'm a registered nurse and manager of outpatient programs with uh, Loveless Women's Hospital. And today I'm here with Dr. Ridgway. Dr. Ridgway, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, uh, my name is Cal Ridgway. I'm a surgical oncologist and I'm the medical director of breast care at Women's Hospital. Okay, how long have you been with um, Loveless Women's Hospital? This is my 14th year. Wow, okay, well thank you. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what services are av available? Well, at the breast center, where um, the main focus of course is to deal with breast cancer patients. But we also do, uh, we work with the radiology group for screening services, and we can identify uh, folks that might be at high risk. Um, we can calculate folks that uh, might need um, genetic testing done. And other services that we have include um, psychological counseling. Uh, we have an exercise program, which is pretty fun. It includes yoga and we have nutritional counseling as well. Oh, wow. And we're uh, coordinated with medical and radiation oncology to provide a, a complete package of uh, treatment okay. for our cancer patients. Yeah, that's, that's nice so that folks don't have to kind of search and, and go, you know, multiple different places they can. Right. Okay, wow. Um, and then, you know, why is breast cancer um, more common than other cancers? Well, we're not quite sure. We don't. We haven't found as clear a link as say we have with uh, cigarettes and smoking, but it does affect about one out of ten North American women, and um, so it. And it's also common like that in uh, Northern European countries. So it might have something to do with uh, some environmental or dietary factors that we okay. haven't uncovered yet. Gotcha. And um, is, is breast cancer becoming more common than let's say, you know, 10, 15 years ago? Well, we thought <clears throat> once we started widespread use of screening in the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. we thought that we were seeing an increasing incidence of cancer. But happily, it turns out that what we're finding is a lot of real early cancers that we're detecting on screening and then some precancers, things like ductal carcinoma and situ. Okay. So the uh, so the incidence has actually leveled out over the last couple of decades. Okay. And you know, certainly I'm, I imagine finding things um, early on definitely, you know, um, increases the um, um, outcomes, you know, positive outcomes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, um, and then can you tell me why left breast, left breast cancer is more common? 
I actually get asked that fairly often. Okay. And um, it turns out that it's actually not more common. Okay. So it's evenly distributed between left and right. Okay. Um, but that is just sort of a common thought that people have okay. and ask about. Good to know. Okay. So we've, we're myth busting today. So that's, that's correct. Good. Okay. Awesome. Um, and then, you know, with breast cancer, um, is it a, a type of cancer that has a genetic link? There, we can find a real clear link in some cases. In about 5% of cases, we might find the BRCA1 or 2 gene. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a gene that's supposed to help repair DNA when it's normal, but sometimes when it's mutated, it turns into an off switch and makes the cells grow and divide too quickly. So uh, we do testing on certain types of patients to try to find that. Okay, and that's something that certainly a um, patient can discuss with their provider to determine if they would be um, a candidate for that type of screening? Sure, okay. you, should, you should ask your provider about it. And it's also important to talk with your relatives and mm -hmm. sort of explore your family history. Gotcha. And uh, two things that make us more alert for it would be breast, not just breast cancer, but if there's a history of ovarian cancer as well. Okay. Okay. Um, and then what type of new technologies are available at the Loveless Women's Hospital Breast Care Center? Well, we have, uh, we have uh, the most up-to-date stuff for uh, taking care of our patients. Um, one thing that we introduced in 2015 was a device called a margin probe, and that helps us get clear edges when we do a lumpectomy. Mm -hmm. We can actually check it right in the, it's a, I put it right on the lumpectomy specimen in the operating room, and then if it tells me that there might be some cancer cells at the edge of the lumpectomy specimen, uh, we can go back right then and clean up those edges. So that's been uh, really good for our patients. Mm -hmm. Our re-excision rate is less than 5%. Oh, wow. And across the country, the re-excision rate is as high as 20 or 25%. Okay. And then uh, another program that we're real proud of that we introduced in 2017 was intraoperative radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. So usually after a lumpectomy, the folks have to do three weeks or six weeks of radiation therapy, which is sort of like getting a chest x-ray, and you have to go in every weekday. Mm -hmm. But with the single dose intraoperative radiation therapy, right in surgery, when I do the lumpectomy, I can take it out. We put a device in that just looks like a little light bulb, and it radiates the tissue, and then I can take it out and then finish the operation. So wow. when the patients wake up, they're all finished with their lumpectomy and radiation therapy in one day. Okay, that's pretty amazing. What supportive services do you offer um, for our patients? Well, we, um, uh, some extra things that we do, we do have uh, an exercise program that includes yoga, mm -hmm. and uh, that's pretty good because a lot of our patients, um, you know, sort of need to uh, get back into um, some exercise. It's good for their, uh, good for their bones mm -hmm. and helps with their recovery process. And then um, nutritional counseling. We start, medical science is very good at, you know, creating drugs and medicines, but uh, one thing that's been overlooked in the past is nutrition, but we're starting to understand the science behind mm -hmm. that and why and um, you know how we can adjust someone's diet to uh, improve their outcome on down the road. Okay. So do patients need a referral? Patients don't need a referral okay. and we do try to uh, accommodate because we understand that folks are anxious. If, uh, if uh, for example, if a woman feels a lump while she's taking a shower in mm -hmm. the morning, we want her to be able to make a call, come on in, and we can get start get the process started to get to the bottom of that. Most lumps happily turn out to be benign, mm -hmm. not trouble, but obviously folks are anxious until they um, get that news. Yeah. So we want to streamline the process. That's awesome. Yeah. There's there's nothing worse than you know kind of having to wait around to get in to see a provider and then waiting on results. And so I'm sure that's very um, you know comforting and probably helps put folks' minds at ease. So. Um, well, I don't have any other questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add? 
No, but thanks very much. It's well, been thank a you. Yeah, with you I appreciate today. you you uh, talking with us today. Sure. Thanks. My pleasure. My name is Beth Wagner, and I'm from Albuquerque. I detected my breast cancer by having a lump, and I ignored it for a very long time, and I finally couldn't ignore it anymore, and I came to Loveless, and sure enough, I had breast cancer. Actually, my biggest fear at the time of diagnosis was financial. Um, I had suffered a catastrophic loss, and I was out of money, and most people think, gee, the fear is cancer, it's going to uh, take your life, maybe. But when you're, when you're really financially struggling, that's the thing that, that hits the hardest right up front. The Anita Salas Fund was a lifeline to me. As I, as I indicated, the finances were really a problem, and, I, and it was a dark time. And when Sandra the Navigator came to me and said there was a fund available to help me, I was just, I was just so relieved and it was so wonderful to think that people cared about you and they don't even know you. When I was given access to the fund, to the Anita Salas Fund, it opened my heart. Not only did it help my pocketbook, which it did, but it also showed me that people cared about you, cared about me, and they didn't even know me, but somebody thought enough about breast care and breast cancer and the, the funding, which is a big worry, and how that can be alleviated. When I learned that the fund was going to help me financially, it made the treatment seem possible. It opened the door to saying, okay, your biggest fear is the finances, and here's someone who's gifting you. And so it, it strengthened me to, to say, okay, I can go forward, I can do this. With the help of the people at the Breast Care Center, we can get through this, and we did. The best part of, about using Loveless for my breast cancer was the Breast Care Center, hands down. It's an amazing place, and it so comforts you when you go there because you obviously have a big problem and a lot to deal with and a lot to learn about. And one by one, they take you by the hand and guide you along and you have one place to go. And you don't have to worry about where do I have this test? Where do I go for that one? How do I park? Where, what do I do? Where do I go? You go to the breast care center. And from there, they comfort you and cradle you and take you everywhere you need to go.